hello everyone i'm jitain sir and in this video i'm going to explain you about e-commerce blogging and podcasting so first let me define you what is e-commerce e-commerce or electronic commerce is a way of doing business over the internet it refers to buying and selling of goods and services or transmitting funds or data through electronic medium companies create web websites to advertise their products and services Customers can buy as per their choice using debit card, credit cards, net banking, etc., or even cash and delivery. Now, if we talk about the different types of e-commerce, it can be categorized into four categories. First is business-to-business -business commerce. Next is business-to-consumer e-commerce, and consumer-to-business that is C2B, and last is consumer-to-consumer that is C2C. Okay. Like if you talk about business-to-business. So in that case, one business, like suppose a wholesaler and a retailer, there's an e-commerce between a wholesaler and retailer. Both are doing business, and so it's a type of e-commerce between business to business. If we talk about a wholesaler and you can say some customer, suppose if a customer is purchasing something from a wholesaler, in that case it will be considered as business to consumer because the consumer is directly doing commerce from business okay next is business consumer to business like suppose if any consumer is doing any business like any transactions or something in that case it is consumer to business and consumer to consumer like suppose if you talk about uh, olx and all one consumer is selling to another consumer so this is a kind of e-commerce now if you talk about e-commerce there are several advantages of e-commerce like e-commerce is available 24/7 like suppose if you want to buy any thing from any store offline so in that case the shops are open for a limited period of time but you want to purchase it online in that case it is available 24/7 so e-commerce is available 24/7 customers can visit the stores browse the products and place the orders anytime during the day or it be a night e-commerce helps in making the process of finding and accessing the products relatively easier buying and selling through e-commerce is at the time saving activity it is easier to start a business and set up investments and cost are relatively low online service providers also lure their customers by providing them attractive deals and coupons so these are some of the advantages of e-commerce now let's move on to the disadvantages of e-commerce so whenever we talk about e-commerce that is using internet so there is always a risk of getting hacked because while e-commerce makes everything easily accessible but still consumer hesitates to buy online because he cannot examine the products physically second thing is constant access to internet is required to shop online for making payments through debit cards and credit cards you have to be extra cautious because sometimes there is misuse of information and possibility of fraud also so these are some of the disadvantages of e-commerce next we talk about the different modes of payment so there are various modes of payment like whenever we are doing any e-commerce or purchasing something payment can be done through net banking through debit card through credit card through smart card and also through e-wallets yes many of you having the idea of online shopping because you may be purchasing some other thing from online shops like flipkart and amazon etc so e-commerce allows us to shop things online using debit card credit cards and the payment can be done through any means next we have e banking e banking it is also known as net banking e banking stands for electronic banking it is a way of performing bank transactions using the internet a customer can do a number of things using e banking such as you can check the account details you can also make fds rds you can also apply for loans you can also pay bills okay so there are various options available in net banking next is e ticketing we often need tickets for traveling whether by air or by train so in that case we need to book our tickets 
सो ई टिकटिंग मीन्स मेकिंग अ रिजर्वेशन और एन अपॉइंटमेंट फॉर सर्विस वाई इंटरनेट यूजिंग इंटरनेट वी कैन नॉट ओनली चेक द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ सीट्स इन बस ट्रेन और एयरक्राफ्ट एनी टाइम बट वी कैन ऑल्सो रिजर्व रूम्स मीटिंग हॉल्स और टेबल्स एंड रेस्टोरेंट्स ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टॉक अबाउट इंडियन रेलवे इंडियन रेलवे हैज एन ऑफिशियल वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट आई आर सी टी सी डॉट को डॉट इन थ्रू विच वी कैन बुक आर टिकट्स वी कैन कैंसल आर टिकट्स वी कैन प्रिंट आर टिकट्स सो ई टिकटिंग कैन बी डन थ्रू आई आर सी टी सी वेबसाइट नेक्स्ट कम्स वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग दैट इज ब्लॉग ओके many of you may be hearing this word for the first time blog but it is more popular nowadays because it is one of the sensational topic as blog blog is nothing but a website kind of thing it is not exactly a website but it looks like a website where all the posts are arranged in chronological order the word blogs comes from web blog because a blog consists of signed and dated logs of individual postings now let me take you to a browser so that i can show you what is a blog basically okay now for moving on to blogs suppose i search for anything like uh, any file like i see for history of india so in that case it will open the browser will open several links some are the websites and some are the blogs like history of india in hindi so it will open some of the browsers now see if i open this this is the wikipedia page file now when i have opened this file the internet is taking a bit of time so you can see these are some of the blogs the blogs appear similar to websites only now see this is a website where you can see the information okay i take one more now I'll talk about the difference between a blog and a, this one. Difference between a website and a blog. Okay. So we were talking about difference between blogging and website. So here is a website. When I click on this, this is uh, one of the favorite websites, your school websites. When I click on this, it will take you to a website that is zavierschool.in so here it has opened so this is your website like everything is present it can be static it can be dynamic okay on the other hand i have another link this one so if i click on this part it will take you to a blog so here it will be clear like what is basically a blog and a website what is the basic difference between a blog and a website now here it is a blog as you can see in blogs the articles are written and it is arranged in chronological order like january 14 2021 this is a blog okay if you click on this there is an article written over there and articles are posted like this is the article it was posted on 14 january and the previous article was posted on 23 january so this way the articles are arranged in date wise decreasing order of dates so this is a blog okay and if you talk about this this is a website website contains information it it contains hypertext it contains images marquee tools so this is basically a website and this is a blog in blog we basically post articles which are arranged in decreasing order of dates that is in chronological order got it 
Okay, next we have a web feed. A web feed is basically a data format that is used to keep the users abreast with the frequency updated contents of website. Like just now we have discussed about a blog. So in blog, suppose there is a new blog coming. So in that case, it comes as, as a notification. So in simple word, you can consider web feed as to be a notification that gives us information about the frequently updated contents of a website. Next is a very interesting thing that is podcasting. And before podcasting, let me explain you about blog, like how blogs are created and how it is done. So for that, I'll take you to blogger.com and I'll show you how blogs are posted, how blogs are done. Okay. So I'll take you to the browser. Here for blogging, we can do it in the in blogger.com www.blogger.com So here in blogger.com first we need to log in click here I have clicked on this blogger website and when you click on this blogger website so here you have to create post basically okay since it is already logged in with my account so it shows that I have created one post over here okay similarly you can post new articles you can post your articles and it will show you the layouts like you can check your layouts you can design your layouts here okay there are various options you can change your profile image so these are the posts I have created one post if you click on this post it will show that I have created some post so this is my post so here whenever you create a post you need to give the title over here and then you need to write the things you can also insert images links videos etc just like other editing options you can insert many things and after editing you need to update that so once you update your post is displayed in this post now when you create my multiple post so in that case it will appear like this like on this date you have posted this you can also write your names and date will be published by default so this way a blog looks like so using a blog through blogger.com or wordpress you can easily create your website looking interface of a blog okay Okay, let's move on to web feed. We have already discussed this thing. Web feed, as I have mentioned, web feed is basically a web feed is basically a data format that is used to keep the users abreast of frequently updated contents of a website. Okay. Next, we'll move on to podcasting so podcasting is basically a combination of two words that is iPod and broadcast a podcast is an audio or video broadcast that is distributed on the internet it has a similar format as that of a radio or a television show as a distribution medium in internet anybody can distribute his thoughts and opinions to the world by creating a podcast okay so podcasting is the process of preparation and distribution of a podcast and distributor of a podcast maintains a central list of audio and video files on a server the list can be accessed through internet using a podcatcher now what is a podcatcher now a podcatcher is an application software that is installed and is used by the user to access the podcast files it is also list for any updates and downloads the new files from the internet onto the user's computer now there are some of the popular websites that are used for podcasting like buzzsprout.com podomatic.com soundscloud.com and podbean.com so first let me move on to buzzsprout.com when you click on this link it will take you to buzzsprout.com i'm just showing you the interface how podcasting is done 
okay like suppose this is the bud sprout the interface here it is also available free of cost for 90 days as a trial period and then you may have to pay for this okay so this is the interface of buzzsprout i'll show you one more interface of podomatic the interface of a podomatic website that is podomatic.com it appears like this as it is opening So these podcasting websites basically allow us to create our own podcast and we can broadcast this using the internet. Okay. We can also download files, the music files, audio files from that particular website. Okay. So here like we can see you need to log in first and if you have not started so you can start. It will ask you to open your mail or log in through sign up and then once you sign up you will be able to access this so this was about podcasting okay so there are few more websites like podcast.com buzzsprout.com soundscloud.com so these are some of the examples so this is the example of podomatic podomatic interface looks like this here you can create a new podcast to click on this and it will ask you for sign up once you sign up for this, you will be able to publish your own podcast.